Warlock. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Meek's assassin. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Team Secrets turn to pick. Life Stealer. Radiant Team Ban. Game two now between Flipside Tactics and Team Secrets in this European qualifier for the Dota Pit LAN final. This is the grand finals, a best of five between these two teams where Flipside Tactics is already one up. I'm Kaplan, it's going to be joined by CC and C. CC, Flipside Tactics definitely got a lineup that they've shown they're very comfortable with. What would you like to see Team Secret do to change and, and, and kind of match flip side tactics in game number two? Is it a different draft? Is is it, do they need to play faster or slower? What 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 is needed to take on flip side tactics as the CIS team just seems to be steamrolling through team? Uh, I mean, I think last game their draft team fight was just too weak. They couldn't, all their heroes didn't really do that much damage. The TA pick became quite bad um, after they lost the early game. Uh, the Sven pick also worked really well versus the TA, the Lycan didn't really work that well as well, so I think they got outdrafted. Um, this game looks like they're going for uh, the life stealer and then pick a carrier afterward. Sort of uh, an unconventional approach, normally you'd see like them pick a slaughter or something, and then the nakes afterward, but if you do do something like that, they'll typically ban the life stealer. So starting with the life stealer, and then probably going to pick some Slardar or you know some other initiator second because there are so many heroes that can you know blink in and stun, or heroes that can move the nakes in, so looks like they are trying to get more aggressive early on, not let Flipside get away with these really greedy teamfight heroes. We've seen um, a lot of heroes being run right now. Um, I think the this Sven is maybe a little bit more on the farm side, but he definitely hits his, because of the way he jungles and does Ancient, hits his mid-game stride really hard. Phantom Assassin, the build-up with Desolator and, and those items allows him to go really big into the mid-game. Um, there's another example, the Templar Assassin, I think, Secret obviously failing that last game, but it's another hero that's pretty popular in this meta that has the same kind of mid game build up um, that uses Desolator and, and hurts, you know, just, you know, takes on a team fight and can dominate just because of the way you one, two, or three shot some of these supports. Why isn't Lifestealer being seen more in this patch? Because the Chinese are, are like picking it up like one, two sometimes. Um, very rarely, as you said, it's a bit unconventional. See Lifestealer picked up in the first one, two. Usually you pick up the, the initiator first. Reserve time. Um, I mean, I think teams are just starting to realize that Lifestealer is really, really good right now. Um, you know, the nerfs are like kind of substantial at once to his base attack time, some other stuff, but the hero is still uh, the combos, you know, Lifestealer with almost any stunner, especially Slaughter, being able to kill almost any core at any point in the game is just, it's just really, really strong. The Lifestealer is very strong in lane, jungle, um, you know, he can do the ancient thing. Just, uh, just an all-around strong hero. He's good versus a lot of cores. Not many cores good versus him. Um, and and the life stealer. Whenever a Slardar or something like that is picked in the first phase, life stealer almost always bans second phase. 
we've seen that quite a bit, uh, especially in Dota Pit recently on. So, yeah, I think then they're just realizing that and, you know, trying to trying to get the life stealer early on because they do value it, but it's always getting banned in the second phase. They also take that Warlock away, flip side tactics. They're going to get themselves um, a nice four position, the Earth Spirit, who uh, is notorious for being able to have a pretty good impact on the laning phase, given the right rotations, particularly that mid lane. We don't know what that matchup is going to be just yet. Team Secret, their choice now. They banned away the Sven and the Marana. Uh, Sven, obviously, quite strong versus the Lifestealer. We saw the power of the Warcry against some of the physical damage in game number one. And uh, the Marana is kind of one of those new heavy heroes that is very popular right now and has a decent amount of mobility. What are what are some of the things that you look to uh, to counter a Lifestealer pick? Since it is, you know, a core pickup, a carry pickup that's grabbed so early, how do you plan to, to play around that hero if you're flip side tactics? I mean, typically versus pickoff heroes or heroes that like to burst heroes, you either um, play aggressive early on and take advantage of that, or you group up a lot and um, and keep them from getting pickoffs. Uh, it looks like Flipside is picking a lot of heroes with uh, with mobility, heroes to save the Wisp can heal people up, their Spirit and Nyx, pretty hard heroes to get onto because the Carapace and the Rolling Boulder. So it looks they are it looks like they're going for more of a uh, just sort of like try and kite the life stealer, pick slippery heroes. Um, the Earth Spirit pretty good versus the Life Stealer with the kick and the silence, so yeah, they do take the Slardar. Actually an insane combo, it does so much damage at all stages of the game. Yeah, the <laughs> amplified damage just seems to prolong the Life Stealer's dominance. Uh, that heavy physical damage matching with the minus armor, their dire side as well. So there's uh, obviously a Roshan opportunity here for Team Secret to control that and use it to snowball. Flip side tactics. They continue along this trend. They've got Nyx Assassin. They've got Earth Spirit. It seems like, as you said, a lot of mobility, but also kind of seems like they're going to try and set the tempo of this game first. Uh, do you do you want to see them continue down this trend? Um, I mean, I think at this point they have a whole lot of space makers and not really anybody to take up the space. So probably looking for two more farming cores uh, for their mid and safe lane. Um, you know, their Wisp partner, maybe a, maybe a Sven again. Pretty good versus the pretty good versus these heroes. Maybe a Terror Blade as well. Good versus mm -hmm. the Life Stealer as well as the Slaughter. Um, yeah, I was I was with you on the Terror Blade. Our Sven got banned away by, uh, oh, by Team Secret okay, and the yeah. Force. So Terror Blade makes the most amount of sense, right? Heavy, like just a little bit glass cannon style, but heavy amount of physical damage and and really good versus Life Stealer because of that, right? With the illusions and the heavy physical damage and even in some extension the uh, Sunder. Uh, you just become a, a carry that is superior to the enemy's carrier, right? Mm, yeah, and also just a whole lot of armor versus the slaughter. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and if you do get fatal bonds down, you can always sunder an enemy, sunder a teammate. So, uh, good versus warlock in that warlock's typically a lot of slow damage, so you can uh, you can sunder people away. And good versus the slaughter and the life stealer together as well, because he's not really a hero that they can burst down that easily unless they're ahead of the terror blade. And if you're ahead as a life stealer slaughter and behind as a terror blade, there's already issues. Ooh, but that you said, hey, terror blade, you know, a high amount of natural armor because a heavy agility hero. Well, there's uh, there's the counter to that right there. Elder Titan picked up for Team Secret. Yeah, definitely. Definitely quite good this game. Uh, not great versus the Nyx because you can carapace the spirit and just stop him from stomping or carapace the wait to carapace him um, when he starts channeling the stomp. So good versus him in that regard, but definitely good versus the Terror Blade, putting that spirit on him from afar. Um, they have a whole lot of initiation, but also a lot of counter initiation. So Seeker definitely looking superior in these fights and flip side sort of um, not too many answers versus just once again, Team Secret, this game, coming out with a better team fight as opposed to Flipside, who had it last game. Team Secret, they ban away the, the Puck, um, would have been kind of one of those heroes to maybe give Flipside Tactics the um, the early tempo control, would have maybe gotten them the edge and kind of kept Team Secret down from their combination being all that powerful. And Boker is going to be on our scaling core, though, for Team Secret. Uh, I mean, it feels like a pretty natural pickup flip side tactic to stand away the Storm Spirit because they kind of had to when there's a life stealer. So, flip side tactics, how do they respond? Is it aggressive mid? Do they play more of a farming style and try and relax a bit? Uh, I'm not sure. They may try and pick some 
some early fighter and get aggressive on a team secret. Because uh, if they don't pressure them early, this life stealer and slaughter are gonna go around so finding pickoffs. The invoker is gonna help us on strikes and push out lanes. Uh, the warlock will probably sit behind the invoker. It's just, you know, Flipside doesn't really have that many ways to make moves. So maybe a hero that pairs well with Wisp that can. Have you seen go a mid the ganks? Mid Ursa versus Invoker? Is, that, is there too many cutting? Bat oh, Bat Rider. Uh, Ursa is kind of just like unplayable versus uh, Slaughter. Oh, okay, and, okay. And and also the Warlock, just like too many spells to kite. Uh, the Invoker's like not great versus the uh, Ursa in the lane, but in the game, it's really really hard for the Ursa. Just a whole lot of kiting spells. Um, and ends up just being sort of too much to run at you, I think. In Nyx Assassin, yeah. Ursa, uh, Wisp, just a whole lot of. So they need a really solid initiation, which is in part right why Team Secret banned away the puck. Um, so instead, Flipside Tactics get themselves a Bat Rider, a nice controlling hero over the Life Stealer. It can do well in the 1v1 matchup against the Invoker. And, you know, you needed to, an early Temple Controller kind of no matter what, right? Like you, you had to be able to make sure Team Secret didn't get the full mid game swing at 25 minutes with this Life Stealer Slardar combination. Yeah, um, they can't really gank this uh, this life stealer though, so he's probably gonna have a good start. The Nyx will, you know, get some farm or whatever, but the slaughter is definitely gonna have. I mean, the life stealer is definitely gonna have free farm. Roger's probably gonna play around this mid lane with the Bat Rider. Um, mid one needs to be very careful because that's really the only lane that they can gank super easily. So uh, if, if he doesn't die there, you know, and give up the uh, give up the kills, give up the levels to the Bat Rider, give him a quick blink, then Skirt should to be able to execute just fine. Um, Puppy may end up sitting behind mid one as well to defend that. Uh, this mid lane should be plenty a, a battleground early on this game. Do you favor uh, one draft or the other? Uh, definitely secret, I think. Um, flip side is just on so much of a timer. If they don't get stuff done, if they aren't ahead, they just get sort of bulldozed by secret. And even if secret's behind, you know, if they have a bad early game, they have a whole lot of team fight to come back. Um, they can still find pickoffs as long as the slaughter gets a blink dagger. It is sort of um, the only issue with Secret's draft. They don't really have a way to get the nakes in if uh, if Slaughter has a bad game. So if Flipside is able to shut down the Slaughter, keep him like way down, make him get a super late blink, then they will have a window where Secret isn't really able to uh, to get initiations that well. But if he gets a blink dagger, this game becomes very rough, very fast for Flipside. Do you think in order to secure that puppy, they should do some sort of like dual lane. Pretty common, right, for Elder Titan to sit in the off laner uh, with the off laner and try and boost that that laning phase for the first few minutes. Yeah, it also looks like he bought a stout shield, so looking like they want to go down there and brawl, uh, realizing mm. they need the starter to get a good start. Well, Puppy is maybe gonna get scattered out. Nope, Bands core. His smoke and push out is just a bit too late, so Puppy's ward may go unnoticed. Going to be nicely placed ward, not blocking anything, but getting a lot of information, nice and deep. Flip side doing something similar here. They actually get um, this top river ward up. What do you think that's necessary for them to to get like this kind of ward up for flip side? Are they they want to be able to know what's going on in the jungle? What's the what's the idea behind a ward like that, and why is it so important to get it up early? Uh, I mean, they may not realize that they're probably going to do some sort of dual lane, and they want to see. Uh, Puppy's moving between mid and top because mm -hmm. he is sort of the hero that can defend mid one from these rotations from the Earth Spirit. So, um, just sort of giving us some information if they can go on the uh, Invoker or if they're going to get stomped and turned around on. Um, you know, you also just always want to know where the Roamer is. An Elder Titan, a hero that's movements are typically pretty predictable. So, seeing where he is really uh, just lets flip side like go to make the rotations around that and not get countered out by the uh, by the stomps. So in other words, it's kind of an ineffective ward if Elder Titan sits bottom. <laughs> yeah, it, it sort of doesn't really do that much of a either uh, do its purpose really because the warlock is just gonna sit in full and uh, and helps the life stealer in lane into a six probably and the LP is probably gonna go to this bottom lane because he bought the stout shield. I'm pretty sure Seeker is pretty happy with this start. Forev not only stole the rune that by itself is good enough, but now Metamorphosis has been popped super early. Really nice choice there by Forev to battle it out with a trio that has no disables, really. Yeah, he's also he's gonna have to go back to base, so he's gonna miss a wave of XP. It's not terrible for flip side, but by the time he gets back, the metamorphosis will be down, and it'll be a free lane for him to contest in. 
Puppy will make his first appearance here in the mid lane. While the Slardar is away, he feels like uh, mid one already being pressured with five seeking napalm stacks needed to make sure the Earth Spirit, who is probably going to be sitting mid a lot, is uh, is not able to get a good connection. Uh, fortunately, they do have a really nice ward. Uh, not just this ward that's giving them a lot of information about the Earth Spirit, but this ward as well as seeing this rotation across. So it seems like uh, mid one's going to be on high alert every single time the Earth Spirit makes uh, a wrap. All the information is available to him. Yeah, this is not going to be a game where mid one gets a really good start and uh, is able to go around and make a lot of flashy plays. He just needs to play defensive. Um, doesn't don't feed away kills and get as much as you can. It's it's not going to be a pretty start for the Invoker. Oh, Puppy is going to be gone on. Nice combination here with the Wisp, and they're actually going to block him into the staircase. Uh, slowing him down just a bit. Frev is finally going to get over here. Managed to hit the stun on Advanced Core. Has a tether back up, though. Gets down the cliff to the assistance of Roger. Two-minute rune is coming up. This combination so deadly. They do manage to get a spirit out, trying to cancel the, the healing ward of Vance Core. Fred's going to be pushed back by Roger, and the two-minute rune will be successfully contested by Flipside. Yeah, their spirit and the wisp playing together really well, trapping them there, getting a lot of harassment, and sort of like pushing them off the lane, uh, keeping the slaughter from getting XP, getting these weird skirmishes on the side. So the terribly definitely having a good start in the slaughter, not really wants to where he wants to be, having to go back to base for the second time in two minutes. Yeah, that's that's the really nice part about the Earth Spirit, right? The the fact that if you hit the rolling boulder, you appear on the opposite side of the hero. It means this combination with the Wisp gets a guaranteed tether slow every single time and just gives you a lot of extra time to get right clicks in. Yeah, the Earth Spirit, um, just by virtue of being in the game, is putting so much pressure on this Invoker. If he ever gets rolled on, the Bat Riders even you know, within the vicinity, this Invoker just dies, so only one CS right now compared to the Batriders, 15, maybe 16 after this creep. Damn, you would think with uh, all the vision and, like, their spirit and Wisp kind of battling out in that bottom rune, you'd think he would have had the time to be able to get at least a little bit more CS. Puppy, he may be our first blood, but a nice stun comes out just in time. A puppy will crawl away with just 20 HP. Away from the Terror Blade and Wisp. Metamorphosis used. Cedoy will fully control the lane now. Yeah, um, he, he doesn't know where the Earth Spirit is, but it's gotten to the point where Take My Wild or Take My Wild has gotten boots now. Mid one doesn't have boots, so he can even threaten solo kill. So mid one has to play very, very defensive, even whenever he knows it's just the Bat Rider in the lane. Because giving up a solo kill early on is the worst thing that can possibly happen for Secret. Mid one. Conservative style continues as he knows Roger is uh, just around the corner. He even sends a Forge Spirit to chase him away. Anytime he's got like two stacks on him, right, he has to start backing up. Yeah, it is. It's not a fun existence right here, but Mid One is playing it like he needs to. Just getting extremely little, but not dying. That's the most important part. Because his battery is going to get free CS regardless, but making sure he doesn't die to these air spirit ganks. There are only two at this point, and really no way to get XP if he doesn't get these rotations. So mid one, really attacking himself this game, but playing very well, making sure he doesn't give up kills. Well, eventually, mid one does need some help, and Puppy is going to be here. He's going to make his first rotation with level two ready to go. It's only until he has that stomp that he can actually do something here, but a nice scan comes out. Managed to get the successful read. We'll see if Flipside try and go on mid one anyway, but I highly doubt it. They don't want to be caught out by an Echo Stomp underneath the tier one tower. Yeah, they really, really, really want this kill though. Like you can tell this Earth Spirit just... <laughs> He's not letting it go, man. He wants yeah. it bad. They're actually going to TP up the top lane. Nyx Assassin is in a bit of trouble, but now he's going to be saved. A nice two-man stun followed up. Highlight die, first to go down. First blood, NP turns against the three man, but realizes he neither one of the... Uh, Side Heroes is low enough for them to actually make it go. Maybe actually Shot Slow almost goes down with the help of Fatal Bonds, but the Stomp doesn't land. And they will both stay alive still. Nice rotation out from Flipside. Probably didn't expect that one. Top lane, they think they're trying to push the Nyx Assassin out, make a good go on him, and all of a sudden two supports show up out of nowhere. Yeah, very nice rotation. Double TP, so it does come at a cost. They do get the first blood, but Slaughter is going to have a whole lot of free XP in this bot lane. And Evoker also is able to sort of catch up on the XP puppy around here, so in my wild. Oh, nice stomp into the Sun Strike. And mid one finally, finally gets his vengeance, man. He's my 
This bat rider has been dumping on me the whole entire landing phase, but I haven't died. They finally make a connection with a successful Kanka puppy. Yeah, that kill is absolutely huge. Um, him being up as many CS as he was, mid one playing extremely safe. It's so hard mentally to be okay with having two CS when you know the other person has complete free farm. But just staying back, making sure he doesn't die, and then you know getting as many levels as he can, getting the level five, three level sun strike, and puppy coming in for the gang. Now they're on even footing again, uh, even after that atrocious landing stage. So mid one with like really, really good strength of mind to not go up for more last hits and feed. Yeah, you could see he's only 200 net worth behind, despite uh, obviously a very large CS differential. Like Gank met everything in there. Maybe another one. Puppy is still kind of setting up. Pylai dies here as well. They really want to get Midwan ahead. Puppy's going to lead the way. The Echo Stomp is going to land. Batrider will be hit here by the Sunstrike. Follow up with a little bit of extra damage from the Cold Snap, slowing him down. Damage over time with the Warlock helps control the Batrider, but the Wisp Heals are superior. Keeps Tame My Wild ahead of this gank. And the supports from Flipside rotate in. Secret already backed up, though. Stun comes out from Shachlo. Does land on the Warlock, but nothing is going to come of it. They can't really dive the Tier 1 Tower again. Not against an Elder Titan. Yeah, Tame My Wild, um, skill building very much for these early fights, trying to uh, to get aggressive and get kills on one, but just like completely countering that once again by not dying. So that rider not really able to farm jungle stacks um, that well right now with the 3-2-1 build. Yeah, is this, uh, <laughs> this is something that, who was it, like maybe Moonman was talking about on Twitter or something with a recent change. You know, he used to go like uh, no levels of Flaming Lasso and you you'd go to a drum build and you just try and like maximize your, your basic abilities. Forever almost goes down, actually will. The last hit comes out from Cedo just barely. Even swaps around a little bit of HP. Roger smokes up, almost hit by the stomp. Oh. That was going to lead into a sun strike, but Roger, with that clutch play, will manage to get out. Nick's assassin has gone on at the top lane by the life stealer, but now it's going to be turned around on by Team My Wild. Push back straight into the tier one tower. A little bit of extra magic damage, and it's enough. Physical damage comes out from the tower to finish off the life stealer at one HP. Yeah. I can't believe that play by Roger, though. That was pretty clutch. Realizing the scenario who he was in, if he hit, he's hit by Stomp, he's hit by Sunstrike, so he smokes up like that. Yeah, that was really, really smart. They're going to uh, rotate on to mid. This time around, the vision is gone from mid one. It may finally be caught by this gank, but Puppy's kind of lurking behind mid one, stalking him, seeing if the, there is a gank that comes in. Kick back. He's there, ready to go with the stomp, and saving mid one's life. Sure enough, three-man stomp is good enough. MP's actually going to try and punish here. Comes in with the open wounds. Rogers gets stunned up by the cold snap, and MP and Puppy beat the support down, punishing him for a failed gank on mid one. Yeah, really nice turnaround. And all this time, Pilot Eye almost is level six top, so... Almost getting to that point where they can start taking fights uh, and defending these towers much easier. Forever also getting some free space bottom while the Terror Blade does some jungle camps. Everything's looking pretty good for Team Secret. We both kind of felt like their their draft was a bit superior and the laning phase, the kind of plays they're making, as you said, like mid one, playing the correct kind of conservative style until the ganks finally come in from the supports. They're not giving away too much, but we haven't really seen the entrance of Shashlo just yet, and he does have his level 6. His first gank is going to be targeted toward Fareb, who's had a pretty free time against Sidoi 1v1 most of the laning phase, as both, supports, both support duos have been sitting behind mid most of the time. Doesn't look like they're going to catch Fareb, though. He managed to get uh, a call out from somebody, saying the Nyx assassin is missing. Everybody seems to be playing pretty conservatively right now for Secret. Mm. That's just sort of how they need to play. This game is very much, if you don't die to all their ganks and stuff, then um, give up kills and towers to the early pressure, then the game just gets pretty easy for Secret. Even with just tick gold, uh, the Sada will get the blink pretty early, so if he doesn't give up a lot of kills, then he will get this blink at a reasonable timing. Currently just trying to slow down the push, but uh, it doesn't seem like there's going to be too much commitment. Maybe Fared's going to be caught though. Roger jumps in, Pylai dies, forced to drop the golem just to try and save Fared, but it's not good enough. MP TP'd in, went straight for Van Score, Sunstrike not going to land, but it's not needed anyway. Cedoy, half HP, has Ooh. the Sunder ready to go, the stomp. Oh, TP out is successful. Flip side, 
not able to get the tier one tower team secret not giving it up and also creating a lot of space for this invoker as he continues to sit mid lane as the full five man of flip side fails to push in yeah the level two forward spirits now so if they don't come back pretty quickly he will take this tower but bat rider coming in they have the sentry and the wards they know he's here so stopping any potential gank maybe gonna try and turn around with the dust star ready to go for rev is gonna make the quick stun on the bat rider the stun comes down from the earth spirit but not going to be enough. Even Banscourt's in serious trouble. The Amplify damage. Sun Strike on the mark. Rev nails him first with the Crush. And even with that rotation, they'll still be able to get some good damage on that tower. MP, he goes straight for Cedroy, but now the swap around between the Vendetta hit as well as the Sunder. Shashlo's hoping to wait for that Rage to pop out, land the stun. The slow's there. The stun will land because of it. Five to six now as they get a little bit of a punish on MP at bottom lane. Yeah, super nice play from Ferev. Uh, seeing the, the guy walking across with the sentry uh, really well placed and immediately buys a dust uh, while he's TPing in. So super fast reactions, runs over and gets the free kill on the bat rider. A really, really nice turnaround in this bat. Not a game where you can be behind on a bat rider and it'd be okay. So super nice play from Ferev, but sort of equalized by the kill on MP, getting a little more aggressive. Yeah, essentially trying to make too many plays happen, right? Yeah. Uh... The kill on mid, as you said, perfect, slows down the blink dagger, keeps the flip side aggression at bay, but Cedoy definitely made a, a chunk of change. Was it Cedoy? No, it was actually Shachalo who picks up that kill. Either way, they both enjoy the experience, and Cedoy will get some space to actually take this tier 1 tower, finally. Yeah, he is uh, he's a very, very rich terror blade, so besides uh, Beacon of Hope in this game, uh, able to take down a lot of these early towers with the already the treads and the dragon lance level four in his illusion and his metamorphosis so dealing a metric ton of damage to this tower nyx assassin wrapping around behind the mid tower counter ward's going to be laid down though pylite die not going to die today spots out the nyx assassin's gank and now they're going to tp rotate to bottom lane and make sure their tier two tower doesn't go down to the metamorphosis up Terror Blade. You said Terror Blade, pretty damn farmed. You're right, 6,500 over the 4,600 that is currently sitting on both the Life Stealer and the Invoker. Uh, I was going to ask you a question. It looks like we're going to have a fight top first. Tier 1 Tower goes down. The roll misses, though, because currently a Life Stealer sitting inside the range creep. The rest of Flipside pushes forward, hoping to be able to catch Midwan instead, but a stomp slows them down. They may still catch Midwan, though. He's napalmed up. Tame My Wild managed to get the lasso, actually just sitting over him, over the goal up stun. Will be able to get the kill. Pylai Dai trying to help out as best as possible, but it looks like Flipside Tactics may just run over these heroes. MP finally pops out of his infested creep, goes for Roger, will manage to nail him. Two for three so far. Team Seeker coming out on top in this engagement. Flipside. Getting too aggressive. Uh, it, like, as soon as the, the boulder missed, they still continue to go for that kill, and it cost them dearly. Fighting into Pylai Dai's Warlock Golem. Yeah, they sort of forgot that MP was in that creep, so he comes from behind, picks off a couple of the supports, kills Vanscore first, so not able to save the other heroes. And uh, mid one microing his Forge Spirits after the death, so getting, you know, five, six, seven uh, volleys of attacks off and really chipping down the squishier heroes, lowering the bat's armor, so over the Warlock did. The Warlock Golem did come over, just sort of whomped him for a whole lot of his HP and took him down. So the Terror Blade is the big threat, right? They they kept, you know, the Bat Rider down for the most part, and eventually he'll get his items. But, oh, kick back, nice play. Mid one in some serious trouble with the relocate in. Mid one's definitely dead. He knows that. And that's why he just turns and tries to get the kill on Roger. He does make it a successful one for one. Yeah, and they are going to take the mid tower off of that. So really nice rotation. The Wisp. Getting six not too long ago, and almost seven off of that kill. That's the stuff Flipside needs to sort of uh, keep doing, making these plays, getting aggressive. But Bro finally has his blink dagger, so threat is live. Yeah, this whole uh, this whole team fight dynamic could change in an instant. It used to be Secret could only win fights with chaotic offerings, but now with a blink tag, they're going to find their initiation. They go straight for the assassin. Already one down, and Secret quick to retreat. 
flip side. May still be able to catch Varev, though. He's got sprint up in a second, but he's slowed down by the napalm. He almost has his blink up, but the right clicks just keep on coming in. They put the courier on him, making sure you get as much vision as possible over Varev, but he finally does manage to make a blink away. 30 HP. If he's nailed by one spirit, he'll die here. Vanscore is just feet away from being able to get this kill. Roger also rolling in, looking for this kill, but Varev... The sneaky fish will stay one step ahead of Flipside Tactics. He blinks himself away a second time, and Secret go unpunished for their initiation on the Nyx Assassin. Yeah, and while he scuttles around, the TB is ult is down, so a really, really nice pickup on the back lines. Buys enough time for them and it's just to wear down, so not able to, uh, to take that tier 2, although it is quite low. So is this how you play around the Terror Blade? You just kind of try and get these picks and slow down the Metamorphosis pushes? That's what really what I was getting into, right? He's the biggest threat. How do you play around him? Yeah, you just have to... Um, the other heroes, eventually it'll get to the point where whenever all of his team is dead, no real supporting cast, they'll be able to kite him around with the Invoker spells, stomp after stomp after stomp, crushing him. But to have enough kiting spells once his team's dead, so not really focusing him, but sort of trying to kite him as much as they can, uh, throw some disables on him, and, uh, and blow up the rest of the team. Yep. Kill the back line as many times as possible. Flipside Tactics, they just lost their Earth Spirit on a mid-attempt. The kills in this game just won't stop. We have 20 kills in total in 17 minutes. Flipside put a bit of pressure on the Tier 1 tower, but don't have Metamorphosis. So they're not going to fully commit. The jump in, though, for He managed to find the Vanscore Wisp, but a nice stun comes out from Shotchlow at the right time. No rage being used by MP. It means Vanscore will be able to tether his way out. And that's an infest blown. As well as two heroes top, it seems like Flipside Tactics, this could be a good time for them to push down that top lane, knowing that Infest is on cooldown for a bit of time. They managed to get the relocate onto mid lane. Looks like they're trying to make the initiation with a Batrider. Byli Die had a nice response, though, with a Chaotic Offering. MP, in the meanwhile, does manage to get the Nyx Assassin, who is trying to sneak his way in with a Vendetta while the relocate came in at the same time at mid. A bit of miscommunication is going to cost them dearly, as they're still going to lose their wisp. The initiation comes out. Metamorphosis, though, is too much for MP to handle. He gets a bit too over aggressive and gives away his life to the carry of Seedoy. Yeah, whenever they made that initial Nyx bomb uh, gank on the Wisp and the Nyx here, Joshua made a really, really nice play. He was out of range from the Infest damage, but he walked back into it and spiked Carapace. So it, uh, it stunned him on the initial Infest pop out so he couldn't get his uh, rage up and kill the Wisp. It was a really, really nice play. Ah, nicely played by Nyx Assassin. Flipside Tactics will finally get this tier one tower. A bit of a, a bit of a delay. Again, I wasn't sure where that relocate was going at first with the way that Nyx Assassin was scouting top. Seemed like that whole entire idea is a bit of miscommunication, right? They can't be trying to scout two areas at once and go for a relocate. Kind of cost them too much. They split up. They still get the tier one tower, but a couple of those like that. They cannot afford against Team Secret who are just slowly but surely building up a strong mid-game team. They've got a decent experience advantage and a slight gold lead, despite the number of towers that Flipside have currently controlled. But in a game like this, where your lineup is so centric around the early game, and take, or not necessarily the early game, but this, uh, this mid-game and putting a lot of pro... Stun and countered out by Ferev and MP's combination. Pylai Die will be saved once again. Roger, getting away, Vanscore may not be as lucky, tethers to Seedoy, Ferev misses out on the stun, meanwhile Nyx Assassin gonna be caught once again, rolled over by the Meteor. Flipside have lost two of their cores and are forced to retreat, Ferev still looks for more though, Roger's gonna be nailed by a Crush and a Sunstrike, long roll away, but Ferev on hot pursuit, a good relocate out, will save Roger. But it may not save our Wisp. Our Spirit's going to try and get in position to be able to allow the Wisp to tether away. They're going to need an instant stun for Rev. He, with the Amplify damage, they see where Roger's at. So they just kill Roger instead, and the Wisp gets away. But all that, Vanscore used to relocate to save Roger. He still dies anyway. So Flipside just end up with a relocate down. Yeah, as I was going to say, in a game uh, like this where Flipside needs to be ahead early, old being even is definitely secret favored. Um, Flipside needs to have an advantage in this game for them to... Uh, than to be in a good position, but whenever the game is on even footing, the Slaughter has a Splink Dagger now, so... As you can see, the Flipside just been hemorrhaging kills all over the map, and it's really, really hard not to. Chaotic Offering used, drop there! 
as once again our Nyx assassin is being uh, scouted out by these kind of wards from secret. Yeah, it's multiple times. The one on this uh, by this bottom ring, that sentry, the sentry there, the sentry up top, um, by the uh, the top tier one. Just really, really nice counter warding, and uh, and off these kills, puppy already has a hood up, so sort of buffing up their tank ability so that they can't get down these initial heroes with their uh, with their burst, and the secret can just continue to just chase them down with slaughter stuns and really optimizing, itemizing well for these fights. Um, Seeker are definitely comfortable with the position they're in. They're trying to deal with a gigantic illusion army of uh, Seedoys here. He found himself an illusion rune, secret. Looking all around for kills as they've got this Lardar Lifestealer combination ready to go. A deadly duo that can pretty much guarantee to kill almost anybody on Flipside Tactics if they find the right person. Shanchalo is sneaking around as the Nyx Assassin, hoping, praying that he won't run into another kind of ward. But it's going to be mid where initiation is at. Roger. Oh my god, that is a chunk of HP, MP. Slices and dices support across Flipside Tactics. May just lose a Roshan because of that, because it looks like Secret want to dip their head in there. They've got the amplified damage. They've got the physical damage. They really have everything they need to be able to do Roshan in a chip. Yeah, mid one breaking the Lincolns with the Yule, so able to get the uh, open wounds and the amplified damage off. Roshan is just going to drop super fast. Flipside trying to put some pressure on this top lane, but... If heroes off the map, they could be Roshaning, but it's not for sure. And if they are Roshaning, they'll be done very, very quickly. So dangerous yeah. to push top. So they can still TP potentially, but never mind. They're not even going to try. Instead, it looks like they're just going to try and claim bottom lane. And they'll be six. Oh, I thought they were going to be successful, but never mind. Team I Wilds, quick with the fingers, does manage to blink ahead of Rev's crush. Still, though, that rotation should get them the tier one tower. And this TP probably needs to be canceled. Shotslow, fortunately, no counter vision there. So it won't be caught. In fact, he's going to make his initiation. Two man stun to lead things off with the fire damage over the top. Flipside Tactics coming in with a very big metamorphosis of Sinoi. But he doesn't actually have the disables anymore to lay out the damage. The relocate perhaps just a bit too far behind to take control. Take advantage of that control from the Nyx Assassin, rather. Hmm. Yeah, the Terrorblade having a Diffusal Blade now. So when the Nyx Assassin, or when the Life Sealer's Rage is down. He does a whole lot of damage, so Flipside still with avenues into this game, this Terra Blade being absolutely massive. Zero deaths, four kills, three assists. Didoi playing really, really well with that good landing start he had. Um, taking a lot of Secrets Towers, but if he ever makes a mistake and goes down to a Slaughter Bomb combined with a Sunstrike, or you know, if a team fight goes poorly, um, he's able to get chased down, this game will go downhill very, very quickly for Flipside. Echo Saber for the Life Stealer. <laughs> this, uh, these like three items seem to just kind of like make this meta right now. So many strength heroes and even some agility heroes taking advantage of the cheap desolators, uh, damage that it provides, cheap costs. Echo Saber, great for all these strength heroes. You see this Life Stealer now that he's got all three items Armlet, Desolator, as well as a lot of Slardar down. Team Secret should be able to take some control of the mid-game, but Flipside still has some notorious pickoff of the bat right to lead the way. You see the Slardar going down, and they're going to try and push forward into the Tier 2. Spike Carapace, trying to catch that uh, that Elder Titan. He's got to be a bit careful with where his spirit's at, otherwise he could easily be caught out. Yeah, Shotsal almost a really nice play. Tried to get the stun off, but probably just a little bit too far away. Uh Almost could have been a pick off and maybe leading into the tower and more, but quite there. Our next metamorphosis is coming out. How did you like uh, flip side to kind of structure this next? Because they can't just like run down towers, right? Flip Secret's a little bit strong, so you, you want to look for pick offs first. How do you structure that? Um, I mean, it probably has to be uh, either the Batrider or the next looking for pick offs, but it's sort of hard them just wandering around. They sort of have to. Uh, Define the initiations near towers and have the relocates by that so they have some sort of uh, fights aren't too chaotic, but. Sidoy just gonna be blown up. Secrets. I mean, that was a little bit of nice fortune simply because they smoked up. They got an invis root on MP and he was able to run straight into the wisp and three shot him, making sure that uh, there was no relocate out save by Sidoy, but 
what Team Secret did there anyway. Oh, and they're going to find more. They're stuck on the cliff, though, because of this one. Four staff up in 12 seconds. Oh, taking the bat. Oh, Shotsel took the gem. Oh, There's nice. Middle tower is under attack. Yeah, they can't actually take advantage of these heroes being stuck on the cliff. Come down in a second now, but tier two tower going to be sacrificed because of that. Team Secret and their pickoffs taking control of the game now. Yeah, they're probably going to run bottom immediately after as well. Still having this Aegis. Uh, no rock, but the Batrider is still down for 20 seconds, so bot tower should be a freebie as well. The rock already killing the radiant wave and pressuring the tower. So two towers off of those pickoffs. And now we see that uh, gold graphs start plummeting downwards. It was somewhat even before. And that was with, fl with Flipside Tactics having a, a pretty decent tower lead. They had like one or two towers up over Secret. Now that uh, the pickoffs start going the way of Secret, they start taking control of the game and taking these objectives. The, uh, the gold just plummets downwards to a 7,500 gold lead now for Secret and almost 10k experience. Yeah, um... The, the way those first couple of picks played out was really, really nice by Secret. Seeing the Wisp and the Nyx Assassin and realize they want to play for more of a pick-off style, um, having Nyx set up for uh, ganks and stuff, and taking their Warlock, and then going into the Lifestealer and the Slaughter afterwards. Um, just sort of countering the way Flipside wanted to play the game and forcing them to make an audible last minute. But really just uh, just too late to, to alter the draft enough, and Seeker just... <laughs> Sorry, do you remember what Flipside's 3-4 uh, bands were? It was like Sven Potom, was it? No, no, I think Secret Band Potom. It was Sven something, I think. Yeah, that that feels... um, When Secret already show the Lifestealer, right? It, it seems like... I know there are probably, you know, there there's so many initiating heroes that you can get, but surely you would ban away, like, when I see a Lifestealer first, I'm thinking, like, okay, Slardar is obviously the first go-to, most powerful with Lifestealer. Oh, and no, it, was maybe Axe, like it was Axe King. Bounty. They banned Axe Bounty. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that ma that makes sense. Axe is one of the better initiators, right, for a Lifestealer, and then Bounty Hunter uh, kind of sets up those kind of ganks, I guess. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still, like, really surprised they didn't ban Slardar. Like, that's, that's the most infamous of the, uh, of the stun initiators, and also just a really, really top tier pick right now. One of the best stuns in the game. Eight mm -hmm. second cooldown, two second stun, uh, two, two and a half, and then a two second slow after that. Just, uh, just kind of ridiculous that hero's stuns. If he can get off to a start, it doesn't get crushed early on. They've got a little bit more control coming out. The life stealer has completed his basher. Sitting back in the inventory, though, as Varev and MP are currently looking for a pick at bottom lane. Expecting someone to poke their head out, maybe just do a little bit of a push. It would be punished immediately, but Flipside Tactics are not taking the bait. Not yet, anyway. They're staking as a five-man in mid lane. And going for Illusion's push, I'm guessing, yeah. The, the map looks pretty dark for them right now. They have these nice aggressive wards sitting up at top lane, but it's the bottom half of the map that they know Secret are, could be occupying, so they're staying away from that and maybe expecting a rotation across. Yeah, and just this Lifestealer, just by just by being in the game, this Slaughter Lifestealer, there's really nowhere that they can go. They all just have to sit around here and hope somebody farms a little too aggressively and they get a pick off and maybe move out, but... They don't see secret heroes farming the jungle, smoking around, um, and just making themselves scary on the map. Flipside just has nowhere really to farm. Gonna try and smoke through their jungle and clear it out, but secret's not there. So just a waste of a smoke and more time as this gold graph plummets downwards more. Flipside clear through their own jungle. They're gonna check into the Roshan pit, but it is not even uh, potentially up just yet. Oh, uh, another two or three minutes until that's ready to go. Aghanims is now up for mid one. So he's hitting the full strength of the Invoker. He's he had the Blink Yules earlier. Now he's level 16 with an Aghanim Scepter. This is where the Invoker truly becomes a team fight menace. Yeah, is um they, they have some ways to kill this Invoker. They have the Nyx Assassin that can, you know, carapace him on a lot of the spells and maybe get a stun off. But we don't want having the Yules to be defensive, so... If he's not controlled massively, then he's probably going to be able to get off a whole lot of spells and 
really kite flip side make these fights just even more awful than they already are. It's just so hard for flip side not to get disintegrated by secrets initiation. But there is some upside still, the flip side, right? They have one of those lineups that if they win one team fight and it's on secret side of the map, they can easily just, you know, pumble through tier twos and tier three towers. Relocate's gonna come in top after a failed initiation. Breb trying to carry MP to safety here, but he's gonna get lassoed up. MP pops out with a rage, but Aim my wilds a bit too fast for him. The golem got dropped by Flipside Tactics are still able to push through. Aim my wild hoping to be able to slow down MP. Looks like it's just Pylai Dai who may be the pickoff here. Tame my wild doesn't actually cut him off, but it looks like Shotchlo will still be able to close that distance. Mid one actually turned on Rogers Earthspear, got that kill. Pylai Dai is finally gonna go down here as he gets stunned up and Sidoy gets the damage in to finish him off. A one for two, simply because Midwan found an opportunity here with the Ghost Walk, and actually he's gonna look for more here. Blinks forward, has Vance Core, tornadoes him out. One more right click will finish him off, and he TPs away. Midwan, what a player. He knows flip side or hunting down Pylai die, and he sneaks in through the side and catches both supports, evening that fight up two to two. Yeah, that was uh, some nice fancy plays, but that was like the dream scenario for flip side. The Slaughter misses the crush, overextends, they get the Slaughter first, the Life Stealer wastes his rage, and still, uh, and Puppy wasn't there, and still it's only, you know, a 2 for 2 after mid one, getting some nice pickups on the back line. Um, they're showing, you know, they also had the relocate uh, behind them with the TB, just really, really hard for them to lock people down once they've used their disables and everybody just sort of walks away. 50 seconds until the Metamorphosis is back up. Fortunate timing for Flipside, though. It's not going to be too early of a Roshan. Metamorphosis being up will time quite well in sync with Roshan coming alive. Yeah, Seeker will be able to kill that in two or three seconds, most probably. The Deso, the Ant Damage, and the Invoker's Alacrity. Gonna melt like butter. And this is, this is probably a Roshan that uh, Flipside cannot afford to give up, right? Yeah, I, they, I think they may have to fight this one. It's really, really hard though. So you could have the spirits around there. On flip side, have some okay Roshan heroes and the Bat Rider and the Earth Spirit can kick stuns into the pit from far away. It's just, it's just super difficult versus the the vision from the uh, the, Earth, the Elder Titan and then also Secret having wards around that area. Like the way that Secret is uh, currently controlling the area around the Roshan pit, keeping flip side down to this uh, low ground area as best as they could. Couldn't actually find a pick off though, the Slardar and Life Stealer combination doesn't actually do it. They poke their head into Roshan, they see it's now up, but they know they shouldn't try and do it straight up. Flipside very clearly want to contest Roshan. Don't want to get caught inside the pit. It all comes down to this initiation. Flipside can make their way back into this game if they get the right jump, and they've got it too. Slardar, he's going to be pulled back. A rage wasted. MP's going to try and close the distance with Tame by Wild. He does get him. BKB popped by Cedoy though, and as he now battles it out with MP, Roger in the back right, being incredibly dismantling, but Invoker just lays waste to the Nyx assassin, almost finishing Mob and Will with a tornado on the right-hand side already. We have Nyx Assassin down as well as Roger. We will manage to finally get a kill for Cedoy, but now he has to man up against MP without the Wisp. As he quickly goes down to the physical damage, ends up dying two to five. A full wipe by Team Secret. They take control of this game, and as a consequence, will be getting Aegis for the, into their hands. Yeah, um, once again, it's just sort of what happens in these fights. Secret just plays around the terror play. They lose some heroes just because of the massive damage, the diffusal blade, and all the illusions. Um, Cedo is super farmed, but it doesn't really matter. They kill all the supporting cast that is not quite so farmed, and then save him for last, and then makes just three shots and one over his amps, and with no wisp to help him. Yeah, when they give MP that, uh, the alacrity as well, Jesus. He looked so scary. Once he, uh, like, you know, he popped out, you know, he's raged, and I thought, oh, that's going to be a waste of rage, but he still managed to get the open wounds on the Bat Rider, and he had the alacrity on him, and he just tore Tame My Wild apart so quickly. It was like three or four shot him. Yeah, he also says his Abyssal Blade now as well, so it can maybe even go on the Terror Blade. Um, not really going to have a chance to Sunder or get up his BKB with the Hard Sun. Was there anything really notable that Flipside Tactics failed in that fight? Because it started off really well, right? The initiation was apt. They got the Slardar with the Bat Rider. That's kind of like the dream start too, right? 
Did they kill him initially? Like, or did he was he able to like walk away and sort of like force them to chase him for a bit? Because I think the Bat Rider was a little bit far, or the flip side was a little bit far. Uh, either mm -hmm. one. So they weren't able to kill him in the last though. Am I right, or am I? Yeah, I, that, that sounds about right, especially with the way that Life Stealer was able to to actually get the Bat Rider immediately. I think he acted as a little bit of a uh, a zoning for it. Yeah, oh, take my wild caught. Eh, it's gonna be a rough pick off here. He's got the Shadow Blade though. Maybe uh, Secret don't have any. Oh, never mind. Ooh. Here's the gem. Oh, I thought that was his Yules. Okay, that was mid ones. Yeah, there's no way he's living. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's an AC for Terror Blade. So what? They they, they just gotta make sure they're a little bit more grouped up when they make that initiation. Yeah, I mean, if they catch the slaughter, they have to blow him up in that uh, in the last duration, or he's just gonna scuttle away. They're gonna have to chase him, use more resources. Um, while Seeker just continues mid one, just like playing around in these back lines, killing the Wisp, killing the uh, Earth Spirit, just tearing them apart. They really, really have to have very structured fights and go from one hero to the next, just blowing them up in unison. Um, because if these fights break up, sort of like they did in this open area, Seeker just jumps uh, heroes, runs away, just continues to go in and out, in and out, in and out, and Flipside doesn't really have the tools to deal with that. On the hunt for Rev and MP. Make the Nyx Assassin disappear like Houdini. They've got one pick off and a push coming in at the top lane. A reload came out from Banscore, but I believe that was supposed to bring the Terror Blade with him. Either way, maybe it was smart that he didn't bring him. Three more seconds till the relocate back. Brev Stun's coming up. Oh, not quite fast enough. It looks like he may survive. Has to get back to the fountain first. God, heals. He's good. He's good. All right. He'll stay alive. Yo, meanwhile, mid one finding a pickoff on Roger, so continuing to assert his dominance on the map. They weren't able to get too much damage on that tier three, though. They still waiting for that one really big pickoff that allows them to go high ground with this Aegis. They've got two more minutes for it, and the pickoff. I think they just found it. Cedoy in some serious trouble. They don't have a relocate, so they're gonna force the BKB charge out of Cedoy. Oh, mid one might have been. Careful, he actually just jumped in a little bit too far. They blow up mid one. Now MP, he has to battle up against Cedoy. Cedoy stunned up for the moment by the Abyssal Blade, but the rest of the flip side, now that the Rage is down, MP is theirs. Rage is still down when he comes back up. Two seconds, but the kick immediately lands. Can they combo this one up? They defuse the blade him, but now the stun comes in from Forev on a two. They've amplified up Cedoy as well. He needs some help, but he can't get away from MP, who stays on top of it until a two man stun. Cedoy turns, he takes them both down. Team Secret lose three as well as the Aegis, Flipside Tactics, finally. They've been on the losing side of so many engagements for the last 10 minutes, but finally they win one. Yeah, just way too aggressive from MP. The BKB already forced out, so probably just better to back up and for that to be down, but now has to use up the buyback. Probably gonna get relocated in by the Wisps. Oh, maybe not. Okay, he has people bought bots, so... They're gonna try and get as much damage as they can during this time where the life stealer and the slaughter are down. Um, only buyback on the slaughter, so no buyback on life stealer. They may actually be able to get the tier three, but I don't think they're gonna get racks off of this. Too much defensive potential from the stomp and the invoker spells. Yeah, and lack of metamorphosis too, right? That's gonna hurt flip sides. Uh, okay, maybe they're not even gonna get any damage on this tier three. Warlock zoning them out really well with this upheaval. Making the high ground push a real pain in the ass for Flipside Tactics. And Slardar's up now, 15 more seconds until the Lifestealer's up. I don't think Flipside Tactics want to get caught attempting any more damage on that tier 3 tower, so they back themselves away. Yeah, they take what they get, some nice free kills. Um, not really a way to push uh, into the upheaval, the invoker spells, the stomps crushes all that stuff uh, way too hard, so they just have to keep doing what they're doing, playing really safe, not getting caught, uh, minimizing casualties, and punishing over extensions. That's the, the best way they have to get back into this game. Is there anything else you can do as Cedoy to uh, shore yourself up against this natural order amplify damage combination? Is, is there any other armor item he could realistically get? Because the AC by itself is basically covering amplify damage. The rest of his natural armor is being covered up by um, by natural order. Uh, 
Not really, to be yes. honest. So no. he's just kind of screwed. He's all, every single fight he's gonna be sitting at zero armor, basically. Oh. Yeah, I mean it's it's nice in theory, but a lot of times it doesn't. You aren't really able to get the spear on the terror blade. Um, mm. He's really fast at this point with the bots. So 456 movement speed, even with the tranquils on the spear, not as fast. So. You know, he just has to sort of play around it. Um, it is very tricky to keep the spirit on him, so not not at that bad. Um, and I mean, if they're if they're getting to the point where he's getting crushed and has the spirit on him, the fight's probably going to go badly anyway. Flip sides start making their way. Act the base. Earlier, we almost saw a pick there from Forev and MP. Almost running into Tame Live Wilds. That would have been not just a core pick, but also the gem from Flipside Tactics taken away. Currently, Vision, very important part of this game's secret. They've got some nice aggressive Vision down Flipside Tactics. They got some aggressive Vision down earlier, but uh, to their benefit, both the side lanes are pushing, and I think it's going to force Secret back. As sure enough, they give up on that mid push and attempt at a pickoff. Deal with the side lanes first. No reason to give up any tier 3 tower damage. They don't have to. Yeah, Cedo actually selling his Dragon Lance, so getting the butterfly now. Waited for them to move away so we could get the Secret shot, but. Oh, Roger, gonna be picked off for Evan MP. Finally, do find a kill, but a support doesn't really mean too much. Certainly doesn't mean that they can go for a high ground push right away. Yeah, doesn't really doesn't really do that much at all. But the the T does have his butterfly now, so he's basically maxed out uh, for all intents and purposes. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, he's uh, he's definitely very strong, and like in that last fight, if they can keep him alive, if he can kite around enough, um, then he can definitely deal with some serious damage. It's just a matter of if his team can live long enough for him to deal it out. Well, until MP gets an MKB, they've got uh, at least that significant invasion into the hands of the Terror Blade over MP when he starts getting targeted. But these items, they'll help, but really the initiation is the, the most key part of these team fights, right? Mm, yeah, for sure. If uh, if Lipsy can get a jump off onto this Invoker or, or the Slaughter or something like that, or even the Lifestealer, uh, they can obliterate him if the TB is in hitting range. Uh, then Flipside actually have a good shot at these fights, but if Seeker gets the jump, then Flipside is gonna have some issues. Jump inside the Slardar and smoke up, push out. Tame My Wild is gonna pop Forev. Oh, blink for blink. Not able to get the initiation on the Batrider that they needed. Tame My Wild playing an excellent scouting force so far in this game. Secret, though, are still pushing out like they want to fight, even though the smoke has been spoiled. Flipside Tactics holding the high ground right now, waiting for uh, Team Secret. See if they end up coming to them. Yeah, the Batrider's Firefly is down right now, so it's kind of hard for Flipside to fight. Spirit spotting out Team C uh, or excuse me, Flipside Tactics positioning. Secret. Not sure what they want to do now. The only way they could really force this fight is wrap around. They're going to run into a creep wave. So instead, they're just going to push mid for now, see if they can force Flipside back. But Flipside, they got a push of their own going at the bottom lane. They can easily go tier 3 at bottom and force Secret, the ones into the defensive positioning. Mid one's just going to try and hold, and it looks like they may still try and go for some sort of wrap. But they're currently Dyer's being scouted by this ward right here from Flipside Tactics. Dyer's yeah, they have this nice ward behind them, so they know if they're wrapping around. They just want to hold this high ground area and... Oh. Mass TP's back, here comes the initiation, Cito, he almost gets blown up, and he does! The relocate, not in time, and a full retreat now from Flipside Tactics. Damage just too much to Hammond, oh, and the Golem actually catches Roger and attempt to TP out. Vanscore, looks like that relocate was actually meant to go top lane, see if they can actually get some damage on that tier 3. If only he was successful in saving Cedoy, it might have been a cute maneuver. But as it is, they're going to lose 3, and Secret will gain control of the map back, and... I just be able to get Roshan to their hands. It's a late Roshan, though, so they still need to wait another 30 seconds. Secret aim to try and punish Flipside before that, though, so they're going to go for the high ground, see if they can force some buybacks. Yeah, they just got way too over-aggressive. Um, secret there is either coming from behind, or they're going to defend in the lane, or they're going to jump your terror blade. And either way, it's it's really, really risky, and highly unlikely that you're able to get any buildings off of that. 
MP pops out, will take shot slow, but it looks like Perez going to be brought all the way back to the fountain, tamed by Wild. Again, seems to be trying to hold this game together. Flipside are not going to go uh, and blow buybacks, nor should they, as they don't have the metamorphosis anyway. They're going to have to give up at least one lane of rack. Secret are going to try and make it two, though. Yeah, without the metamorphosis, it's sort of hard. Oh, push back and a kick. But they are going to be able to catch Roger, snap him down. The long range combination between Puppy and Midwan, but still, that was enough. Kick Secret out of the base. They only lost the top lane of Rax and a bit of damage on the tier 3 mid. But yeah, maybe they had a lose Aegis still, actually. They had a very small window where the Life Steelers Rage was down. They were trying to make something happen, but without the Metamorphosis, they just have like no damage. They actually can't kill him. One of the big parts was that Slardar was holding on to the gem, but uh, fortunately there is a refresh on the gem now, so Team Secret will still have that way to scout out the Batrider and his all-important initiation flipside tactics, scuttling forward with the Nyx Assassin, seeing if they can catch something. They've got a couple supports on the side. They see MP as well outside of the Slardar, for now anyway. He finds his vehicle of choice, though, and Secret... And their awkward positioning and maybe a slight opening that could have been had for Flipside Tactics will rapidly disappear. Secret group up and stay on the high ground. Pilot Eye covering their tracks with the upheaval just in case. Even a stomp going down. Vanscore needs some help, but he won't be able to get the tether on time. Two more seconds, but he's already down. And now they popped a disarm, but maybe MP. He's controlled up by the last open. Mid one stops all the damage. BKB finally activated by Cedoy. And down goes MP. Flipside Tactics will manage to take out the big carry of Secret. Can they get more? Perret pops forward. Managed to get Roger. Stunts him up. Covering the supports track. They need a really good stomp here. Puppy's going to get it with the help of the Golems. Midwan comes in from behind. He's already taken off the Terra Blade, and he looks for more two secrets. They don't need MP. They take down Flipside Tactics by themselves. Tame My Wild barely staying alive until Shadow Word finally brings him low. Midwan. He was being dumped on in the laning phase, but he shows what a menace he can be. He's got the full Invoker arsenal available to him, and he's going to push down mid lane, force out those buybacks. But it's Cedoy alone without Metamorphosis. There's no way he can really challenge Midwan here. Yeah, at this point, with no Metamorphosis, three and flip side down, the game is like really grim. Almost no way they can defend this, even without the Life Stealer. Jump in, Brev. There's a combination. Wisp gone once again. Taking the mid lane of Rax and. Mid one's physical damage is actually off the charts with that alacrity. They should be able to make short work of bottom lane. Flip side are going to be left with one last do or die fight. And it's still going to be a three versus five with the initiation coming out on Cedoy. Oh, is that a Manta Dodger? Maybe just a little bit short there with a puppy ult. Either way, Cedoy doesn't take the damage, but he's being kited around quite excellently. The melee Rax is going down while he's still stuck inside the ice wall, trying to make his way back to the fountain. That'll be Mega's flipside tactics are going to have to fight against the ultimate challenge. And Roger is still going to go down. 60 seconds gone for him. Flipside tactics now have to fight this one out, not just against Mega Creeps, but four versus five for the next minute. Yeah, and even if Seeker did back, I'm not sure if Flipside is a lineup to get the 10 versus Megas. They've got the pullback. Slardar is the choice here. They're going to try and beat him to death without Metamorphosis. It looks like they've got him too, but there is going to be the Nyx Assassin who dies to the Meteor combination from Secret. A buyback from the Slardar. He wants to end this game, and, well, they've got the numbers now for sure. Batrider dies to MP's combo. He's got the MKB as well, so they can make short work of Cedoy, who they've not caught with the Stomp. He chunks down to MP's physical damage, and finally the GG is called. The series being evened out by Secret in Game 2. Well played.